Well, good morning, saints, and happy Sunday. As we now gather for worship, I invite you to turn your hearts to the Lord. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting and whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely upon our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your Holy Spirit, lead us. So that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. And so let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I invite you to join me in prayer. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you and serve you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. The Gospel today comes from Matthew 11, beginning at the 16th verse. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have re revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, I rock and our Redeemer. Amen. We are known by the company we keep. Have you ever heard that saying? It's attributed to Aesop, but I know it from my mother. When she became concerned with some of my new friends or with people who I wanted to hang out with, we would have one of those famous parent-child conversations that have happened throughout all generations, where she asked questions and expressed her thoughts and concerns about my actions and where those actions might lead. You're known by the company you keep, she would remind me. I remember one conversation asking her, what does that really mean? And after listening to her explanation, I let her know that some of these people that she might not want me to hang out with had come to me for friendship, for a sounding board, or for spiritual talk. I loved, at an early age, sharing about the love of Jesus to those who wanted to know more. As you can imagine, this left her in a quandary, as it would most parents, wanting our children to have nice friends but being, well, cautiously proud when they actually listen to our lessons on the teachings of Jesus and they reach out to those who, well, at that time, need some company. In today's gospel lesson, Jesus is speaking to a crowd about John. And first, I want to back up a little bit to the passages before today's gospel lesson. We see John was imprisoned at this time, and he heard that Jesus was preaching and teaching in Galilee, 
And so he sent some of his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? And Jesus replied, go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind are receiving sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the good news is proclaimed to the poor. I'm sharing this with you because John's question is pertinent to our world today. John was going through hard and stressful days. He was suffering unjustly. He who had heralded the coming of the Lord was questioning if Jesus was he. You know, in reading these scriptures through the years, this was always a little hiccup for me, if you will, that John was questioning and needed reassurance about Jesus and who he was. Uh, I used to think, well, he should just know this, right? He should know who Jesus was. He's been preaching and teaching about him uh, well ahead of Jesus' appearance. And yet, and yet, I've learned that even people with strong faith ask tough questions in stressful times. Even people with strong faith ask tough questions in stressful times. And that's okay. With John being imprisoned unjustly and going through what he was going through, I would certainly call that stressful, wouldn't you? And we too, all of us, are going through stressful times right now. So if you have some tough questions for God, that's good. That's fine. Ask them. Be honest. Jesus' actions as Messiah differed from what many Jews expected of the Messiah. So John may have been puzzled by this. And I dare say that many people today are confused and puzzled by what is happening all around us. Trying to find quick or solid answers, well, that's a characteristic of our nature as humans. It doesn't matter where we are on the political spectrum or which Christian denomination we belong to. We are all looking for understanding and answers and direction. Life wasn't supposed to be like this, right? We don't like it. And many of us want to get back to the way things were. Are you the one who is to come? Or should we expect someone else? Jesus' answer to John's disciples was intended to bring reassurance and hope. The miracles that Jesus performed gave evidence that he was indeed the one who was to come and is to come. So secondly, after these disciples of John left, Jesus began talking to the crowds about John. And Jesus told that both men, he and John, were criticized. About John, he said uh, that people said he wasn't eating or drinking, so he must be possessed by demons. And about Jesus, the Son of Man came eating and drinking. And then they said, here's a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. So let me ask you, have you been criticized and thought that criticism was unjust? Perhaps you were criticized for something you said or did, or something you didn't say or you didn't do. Perhaps you were criticized for something you wrote or you didn't write. Please know that you are in good company. As much as it hurts and is upsetting, take comfort that Jesus and before him John were both unjustly criticized. It's interesting that Jesus was critiqued 
for the company he kept with those whom he was eating and drinking. Which is always true in an honor-shame society such as the Middle East, based on the people with whom you socialized, whom you worshipped, whom you worked, those you hung out with, this is how you would be seen and judged. And your family, not just you, but your family would be seen and judged by your behavior, by the company you kept. Bring in honor or bring in shame on your family based on your companions is very much a Middle Eastern trait. Which leads me to wonder if Jesus' parents talked to him early on about the choices he was making about the company he kept. And then thirdly, Jesus offers these words of comfort to those who were listening to him then and to those who are reading the words and listening to him now. Come to me, all you are that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When we become overly burdened with questions and confusion, with bewilderment and anxiety, when our anger burns, well, for whatever reasons our anger burns, turn to Jesus, who has offered to help carry that load with you. When we are criticized unjustly, and we want to lash out in pain and indignation. Turn to Jesus, who will help carry this burden. When we are frightened, when we are lonely, when we don't really see a way forward, turn to Jesus, who has offered to find rest for our souls. When we are exasperated and really steaming, stop, talk to God, and release that anger to the one who wants to make our burdens light. You know, it doesn't mean that life's going to be easy and frivolous and carefree. That's not what's being promised to us. But that when we are living in stressful times, and aren't we all, that we have a continual invitation to turn to the one who loves us so very much, to the one who came to this earth to save us, to the one who moves in and out of this world, offering us comfort, companionship, and a conscience. All of these, the God, three in one, helps us to shoulder all of these burdens. And for that we can say, thanks be to God. Amen.
church and with the people of God, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, where he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the nations, especially the United States of America and Canada, who are celebrating their nationhood this weekend. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationship building and lead us to expansive love for our neighbors. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for all who are in need, for all who are tired, for all who are feeling despair, who are sick or oppressed, as we especially name those that we mentioned before you now in our hearts. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for those who have died in faith, especially those that we mention to you in memory now in our hearts. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in new life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those that are too deep for words through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction to go now into the world inspired by the extravagant love of God. Live generously with open hands, loving one another as if your life depended upon it. Be good stewards of the gifts that you have received so that God may be glorified in all that you say and all that you do. And may the abundant love of God surround you. May the extravagant grace of Jesus Christ sustain you. And may the constant presence of the Holy Spirit inspire and encourage you in every good deed and word. Amen. Go in peace and love one another. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.